Hey everyone, uh, my name is Heron and I'm Digital Creator North's intern slash artist in residence and today we'll be talking about 3D scanning and 3D creation. This is part two, the part one was about augmented reality. Um, but today we're focusing on 3D scanning and photogrammetry as well as how to create 3D assets. Depending on your device, um, you're going to learn to play with 3D scanning through LiDAR, um, or photogrammetry, or creating 3D assets in other ways that aren't 3D scanning. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some examples of how you can integrate 3D scanning with other tools and technologies, so to create even cooler experiences. So where did it come from? What is it used for? And what can I do with it? So LiDAR, Let's talk about what it is as a tool. Um, it's basically a tool that sends pulses of light that bounce off of an object and return to the LiDAR sensor. Each of these laser measurements can be processed into a 3D visualization known as point cloud. Um, we'll go into point cloud for a second because unless you have the LiDAR technology on your built in on your phone, you will not be able to use LiDAR to 3D scan, but that's why there's photogrammetry, so don't worry. So in the past, I mean, probably still to this day, <laughs> scientists have used LiDAR to map the Earth's surface and, and acquire meteorological data. I don't know if you've ever seen those construction people on the street and they're, they're looking at something that looks like a little camera and it's like on a huge tripod. Um, but I'm like 99% sure those are LiDAR scanners. Um, but increasingly used on it's increasingly being used on consumer devices devices like self-driving cars, um, augmented reality gadgets, smartphones of course, and even like vacuum cleaners. Um, and I'll just take a moment and think to yourself why each of these items would require a lidar technology. Like, what? Why do you think it needs to sense and detect? 3D objects in front of it accurately. Anyway, um, should have talked about this at the beginning, but what does LiDAR stand for? It's light detection and ranging. The iPhones 12 Pro and 13 Pro have these built-in LiDAR scanners. Um, maybe everyone could just try to open their measuring tool if they have one on their phone, even if it's an Android, and see if your phone can detect uh, sizes in this way, like by scanning the height of an object or the distance between a few things. If not, don't worry, we got options. Okay, so I just want to show you an example of what it looks like to use a LiDAR scanning technology. And in this example, I scanned my GoPro Max um, and just wanted to give you two perspectives. So this is me in the app called Polycam. I'll bring it up again later, but there you go. The scan button is on. And as you can see, it's trying to read the surface and create what's called a mesh. Clearly, my phone can capture like the floor quite a distance away, the walls. And see how I'm navigating around it. You have to completely cover as much size and angles of the object as possible. This is kind of simultaneously what's happening. I think it's more accurate. And if you look closely, you see that LiDAR scanner working on my phone right there? That little flash? kind of cool to see it from the object point of view. Anyway, on the right, again, that's the rendering page. And do you see the green movement happening? That's pretty much the pathway in which I was circling the object. It's like processing. And as you can see, it processes pretty quick, like 63 seconds. Um, actually, that's kind of long, but let's move on. And now here is a complete 3D asset. This is exactly what the end result is. 
So 3D files are known as OBJ files, as in like object, or FBX. There are a few more, but those are the two main ones for now. Um, and like I said, this is the final product. I mean, what you're seeing here now is still a video of it, but if I brought the file into a 3D, a 3D modeling software, it would show up as a 3D file. Okay, so I wanted to go back and touch on point cloud a little bit because this is just another way in which you can 3D scan without having to have these LiDAR scanners on your phone and stuff. Um, because, you know, your front camera uses, you know, augmented reality filters that the iPhone term true depth camera. And again, see true depth, like it's just trying to say that it accurately can capture how far things are away from each other in space. The technology's interest in capturing depths. So that's why the point cloud technology can work on most front cameras. I, I wanna show you another perfect example of point cloud. Again, it's a collection of data points. Each point, so see over on the right, there's thousands here. There's thousands of points. I mean, like, if there were millions, like, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't even know. I can't even fathom. But each of these single points have an X, Y, and Z, like, uh, piece of information. And the technology basically understands how to map it out. Um, so this is the same app. I use the app called Capture. And again, you can see up close. I, I, I don't know why with this app, when you press the, the AR viewer button right there, it shows you the piece without the uh, material texture, the color, like just shows you the mesh, mesh basically. Okay, so like I said, try the app called Capture and give your front camera a try. I'll show you what it looks like as well to follow someone from behind who I was teaching to 3D session. scan. This was his first time scanning his friends. You can go a little closer to the lake. He was just witnessing what it, what the device kind of requires of you as a capturer. It's really interesting um, teamwork. So try the app called Polycam because Polycam allows you to use photogrammetry as well as LiDAR if your phone has the LiDAR. Um, but it's probably my favorite app, Polycam. So again, it's all about surrounding the object and let's say you're trying to scan a cube. You want to get as all sides of the six faces. I mean, you can't get the bottom of things usually because it's on a rest. It's resting on a surface. Um, so let's just say five sides of a cube. So photogrammetry. This is what most people are going to be three D scanning through. So it's the use of photography and surveying and mapping to measure distances between objects. So as long as your camera can take photos, you can use photogrammetry to 3D scan. Hooray! This was not accessible even a few months ago. Um, and now it is. Download the app called Polycam. So this is a little visual that I made just to help you understand um, what it means to take a bunch of photographs around an object. And pretty much the photogrammetry software or like the smart tool takes all of these and studies again the depth of field. I guess because cameras can stud can can perceive how far things are from each other, the smart tool or that AI technology also can detect those you know X Y Z points like how to make out a three D object just from two D photos. But I mean three D scanning is just another level of that spatial relationship and interest okay so i'll show you now an example of me 
using photogrammetry to scan um, an object. Um, I'll be honest, I think photogrammetry actually turns out more accurately than LiDAR, LiDAR, um, the LiDAR tool on my phone. So that's really good news for everyone that doesn't have a, a LiDAR on their phone. So this time we're going to reverse engineer the process a little bit. Here I, I decided to do this bench at this park because it's kind of a weird object. Like, um, Right, so there it is. And here is a normal picture of the bench, but over on the right, this is after I took 53 images around the bench. You see me scrolling through it right there. That's just to show you all the different angles. Nothing special about these photos. You don't have to be a photographer. You can almost do no wrong. Um, so yeah, sorry, let me just stop there again. That produces a pretty accurate scan. So now you understand that 3D scanning can be done through LiDAR, if you have LiDAR on your phone, or through photogrammetry, which is taking all of these different photos, right? You can use a front-facing cam to use the point cloud technology and scan yourself using the front-facing camera. So now we're going to transition into how you can kind of integrate um, 3D scanning or start with 3D scanning to do really cool new things. Here's a few that I've played with that I'm excited to share with you. So um, I will walk you through how you can go about making your first um, human avatar. So remember, if you want to be the avatar or you want to be captured, you're going to need somebody else to do the capturing. Um, yeah, so Whoever the model is, is going to stand in a T-pose as shown and you're going to take a bunch of photos. I would say take no less than like 50 photos um, of the person surrounding them. Get all angles up close, a little far. And voila. So this is my friend Kai. Kai is a stylist here in Toronto but is originally from Timmins. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's a 3D scan. So that's exactly what I did here. I used photogrammetry to scan my friend Kai and it turned out really funny. We lost the hands, but we were then able to take it into another software. So this is just a, an, let's just say a prototype for our sake. Um, but what you're going to do next is something called rigging. So now that you have your 3D avatar, 3D object file, which is a body in a T pose, you can do something called rigging. So to rig your body scanned avatar, you pretty much plot the points, these main joints. So the wrists, the chin, the groin, the knees, and the ankles. And you can do this in Adobe's Mixamo web-based app. So just go online and type in, I think it's just Mixamo.com or it's Adobe's, so you'll find it. But upload the OBJ file and it allows you to rig inside. Once you rig inside, it'll take you to the next page, which is this animation library. And you can then make your avatar do, let's see, a snake hip hop dance, a chicken dance step hip-hop dance, wave hip-hop dance. I don't know if you've ever wanted to be a hip-hop dancer. Here you go. Um, it'll obviously come out super funky, but really fun and cool. So it's worth exploring and seeing um, yourself or even if you scan like a Barbie doll or something. I think it could be cool to just practice. All right, so this is another way um, of thinking about 3D scanning. And so far, I've been talking about surrounding the object, surrounding the object. But imagine the inverse of that. Imagine being at the center of a space and scanning everything around you. That will obviously produce a scan of the interior of a space. Obviously, I'm talking about being indoors. <laughs> so I did an artist in residency this past summer at Collision Gallery, trading floor. 
Um, and I thought that I wanted to create an immersive experience. And so I 3D scanned the entire space with my 12 Pro with the LiDAR scanning technology. Um, and that's how it turned out. So it can get fun. Um, there's so many things you can do with that and beyond. So here I used 3D scanning with augmented reality to kind of play with scale. I love this idea of scaling objects. Um, so I've had this toy car, I grew up with this toy car in my home since I was a child and uh, I thought like, hmm, let me 3D scan this and expand it and scale it to life size. So just having fun with Kind of turning a mini miniature object back into life size kind of like doing what the opposite of what it was intended for and it's just fun so that's the 3d object right there see i'm sure you're realizing now some of the imperfections of scanning which is the capturing the surface that the objects are on and not being able to really crop that out too well unless you take it into like another software and like do some fine detailed editing but anyway that pretty much sums it up um this is the a scan of my art studio <laughs> and yeah i'd love to see and hear about how you're using 3d scanning technology how you're integrating it into new experiences and what you would want to preserve I think of 3d scanning a lot as a way to preserve artifacts or favorite objects and stuff or favorite spaces in 3d the possibilities are in abundance I can't wait to see what you all do with photogrammetry with lidar with the front facing point cloud captures um, send us your stuff okay Thank you for joining. Hope you learned something. Hope you got some apps on your new apps on your phone to play with. And have a good one. Bye.